Let's talk about Lunar, a team-based trick-taking game with a nocturnal theme. Welcome to Brains on Games. I'm Dr. Brian McDonald, and this episode we're going to talk about another trick taker. It's quick takes on trick takers this week, I think, on Brains on Games. This is a trick taker. I've gotten a whole bunch of them because All Play had a big campaign on Kickstarter uh, with a whole bunch of different trick taking games. And this is one of those brand new games. So it's just delivering on Kickstarter now. I think most people have gotten their pledge, but it should be available on retail soon. It's a game called Lunar, uh, and the box has some reflective printing on it. You might be able to tell. I'm not sure on the camera here. Hopefully it's not too reflective. But Lunar is a team-based trick taker. So it's for between two. You can play two players or you can play four players. You can't play three. It's got to be two people. But really, it's going to be best at four because then you have teams. It works with kids age 11 and up, and games take only about half an hour to play. Let's take a deeper look at Lunar by all play. Lunar is a light trick-taking game. Like I said, it's for teams and you're you're trying to win the game by earning the most points. After a team hits 30, whichever team has the most points at that point is going to be the winner of the game. You earn points depending on how many tricks you win in a round. So you're going to be playing cards that either have a suit on them or a number on them. That's your rank. And they're all moon themed or nocturnal animals we're talking about here. But as you win tricks, you'll be moving around the trick tracking track. Oh my gosh, that's a bit of a tongue twister here. And then at the end of the round, once all all the players have played their cards, you're going to look at how many hands did you win And then that's going to determine how many points you get. So if I win seven or eight hands, that's going to be perfect. I'm going to earn 10 points. If my team earns only from zero to three, I'm going to earn 10 points. But four and five, you earn nothing. You'll get zero points at the end of the round. Uh, Six, you'll get five points. And so it, it goes on like that. So if one team wins every single hand, you're going to have a team with zero that gets 10 points and a team with 12 wins, but actually they get zero points at the end of the round. The other way that you can get some points is that some of the cards have stars on them. So if you win a trick the cards with stars are going to earn you one extra point for each star at the end of the round. So once all the tricks are all done, you've counted up the number of hands you've won, you're going to earn that number of points and then you get an extra point for each star that you won along the way. So it is a team-based trick-taking game. You're not allowed to talk about the cards you have or your plans with your with your teammate, um, of course, but you can communicate a little bit about what you would like them to do if they can understand what you're trying to tell them. So the first thing that you do, once you've got your hand of cards, so you'll have six cards with numbers, six ranks, and six suits. You're going to pass two ranks and two suits to your teammates. So that's one way you can kind of tell them, oh, I want you to win as many hands as possible. If you give them very high numbers, they might expect that that's what you want them to do. The other thing though, once you've passed those four cards back and forth, then you're voting to determine which suit is going to be the trump suit. And this is an interesting mechanism and a way to communicate with your your teammate as well. So you've got these, this is the deluxe version of the game. There are cardboard tokens that you can use instead. I've got the metal ones. So starting with the lead player on the black team, who's going to have this this big metal thing in front of them that says lead in the black color, you're going to flip over one of these suit medallions. So if I don't want green to be Trump, I'm going to flip over the green one. Then the next player beside me is going to flip over another one until it goes all the way around. And whichever medallion is left facing up, that's going to be the Trump suit for the round, the most powerful suit, of course, in that hand. And then the lead player who has the black medallion, the lead player is going to play either a rank or a suit from their hand. It's going to go to the next player, but then the teammate has to play the opposite. So if I play a green card, then my teammate is going to play a number. If I play a number, my teammate has to play the suit. And it is a must-follow trick taker. So whoever is the first to play a suit card, that's the suit that's led If you have that card and you're playing a suit, 
you have to play the same one if you have it. If you don't, you can, of course, play any suit like every other trick taker out there. After each trick is won, you're going to advance the winning team's token on the trick track and then you continue until you get to the end of the round, at which point you're counting up how many stars are underneath your trick tracker token and the stars that you've won through tricks along the way. So what skills are you practicing when you play a trick-taking game like Lunar? Well, I did do a video not too long ago with all the vocabulary and skills related to trick takers in general, and I'll link to that up above my head. But uh, this game also adds an element of executive functioning skills in that those executive functions are the skills that you need to work towards a goal. You have to be very careful how many hands you win in this game because you want to maximize the number of points. So you have to plan a little bit and manage your hand in order for that to happen. Because you, you've got six cards with numbers and six cards with suits, if I play all of the numbers, now I'm trapped. I don't have any numbers left to play. I'm going to have to play a suit. That could mess things up uh, for my partner. In addition to that little extra wrinkle that, it, that invokes the executive functioning skills, you've got what I really like about team-based trick-taking games, and especially the ones where you do get to hand some cards to your teammate, is that nonverbal communi communication. It's they need to understand what you're trying to convey to them by handing those cards. And then you've also got the additional communication of your vote when you're turning things over. Oh, I don't want this card to be Trump. So I think that that really does add, that nonverbal communication does add something special to this Lunar game. Final thoughts though about Lunar. Well, this is... I, the game is gorgeous. I mean, the artwork is great. The cards are, are are fantastic. The moon pictures are beautiful. You've got in the deluxe edition, these big, chunky, heavy metal pieces to indicate which team you're on uh, and which uh, of the suits is going to be Trump. I also like that they included a score tracker that's a wipe off board you've got a dry erase marker you've got a wipe off board you don't need a pad you don't need to dig around and find a pen when you're playing lunar uh, i think that that's that's a fantastic inclusion in the game is that point tracker so you've got team-based trick taking you've got uh, to be really careful about the number of hands you win or lose that does make it tense and interesting and fun um I really like the way they've designed the trick track in that you either want to win very few hands or a, or a certain number of hands. If you win them all, you're going to mess yourself up. So it is a, a really interesting, I think, way of earning points in a trick-taking game. And it's so nice, I think, to have a teammate that you're playing with. And that kind of brings me to the downside of the game is that you, you can play this game at two players. And if you do play it at two players, there are some cards in the middle of the table between the players. It's called the sky because it's a lunar game. And you play one card and you draw, you play a card from the sky as well. It's not as much fun as having a teammate. You really want to have four players when you're playing this game. So you get that communication and you're not just looking at cards that are in the middle of the table. We had fun playing it at two this is a game that really sings when you've got four players. So really that's the downside. You need a certain number of players. You can't play with an odd number of players. You need two or four and really it's four is what you really need to really get the best benefit out of playing a game of Lunar. And that is a quick take on Lunar by Allplay. If you have any questions or comments, you can of course leave them in the comment section below the video or you can email me at brian at brainsongames.ca. BrainsOnGames.ca is the website. That's where future episodes will go. Previous ones are up there already. BrainsOnGames is the X handle and the Facebook page and the Instagram feed. So we're all over the place. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to be notified of future ones, you can head on over to YouTube and click that subscribe button. Thanks for joining me and hopefully I'll see you next time.